Hey everyone, Real Terror here with Action Esports. In this video, we'll be going over some of the basics of Artifact and help you gain a better understanding of the fundamentals before you dive into the game. Artifact is Valve's take on an online digital card game inspired by Dota 2. While there may be some of you who have experience with titles in the same genre such as Gwent, Shadowverse, or Hearthstone, Artifact is unlike anything you've ever seen before. Similar to Dota 2, Artifact is played across three boards or what is referred to in this game as lanes. Each lane has a respective turret. Both you and your opponent's turrets have 40 health. If a turret is destroyed, it reveals the Ancient, which has 80 health. To win a game of Artifact, your goal is to either destroy two of your opponent's three turrets, or destroy one of their turrets and the Ancient. To defend and assault these objectives, you will be able to employ an array of units and tools that will be at your disposal. At launch, there will be around 280 cards in the base game, with 44 heroes to choose from. In Artifact, each deck you play will have at least 40 cards. This includes 5 heroes, 15 signature cards, and spells, among others. Similar to other card games, you'll only be able to carry 3 copies of each card. Speaking of cards, you may have already noticed that they are color-coded into 4 distinct suits. Heroes and spells will be one of 4 colors, red, green, black, and blue. Similar to magic, each one comes with their own traits and interactions. Take for example the recently revealed Lich Hero, who has 5 tack, 9 health, and in fitting Lich fashion treats allies as expendables to generate resources, which in this game takes the form of drawing extra cards as an active ability. At the start of each game, three of the five heroes you drafted into your deck will be randomly deployed evenly into your lanes. As for the last two heroes in your deck, they will be ready to deploy after turns one and two, respectively. Unlike Hearthstone, where it's hard to retrieve your dead Ragnaros outside of the help of a few specific cards, when your heroes are defeated in Artifact, they will respawn and be ready to deploy after just one turn. The respawn counter can be seen in the HUD at the top left of your screen, along with other important information, such as turret health, and which heroes may die in the upcoming turn. In a game of Artifact, you start with 5 cards in your hand. If you don't like them, there's no option to mulligan them, like in Hearthstone or Magic, so you'll have to pay specific attention to deck composition and mana costs. In addition to heroes, there are other units that form the basis of battle. These are referred to commonly as creeps. The first type of creep are ones that you can summon with spell cards to fight alongside your hero. Like heroes, these units have variable stats, mana costs, and abilities. It's important to note that unlike heroes, creeps cannot equip items or respawn after death. Take for example Mercenary Exiles, one such creep that allows you to trade gold for stats. Melee creeps are your third type of unit. These will typically be your most expendable ones. At the start of the game, three of these guys will spawn randomly across three of your lanes in combinations of 111, 102, 120, etc. At the beginning of each subsequent round, both you and your opponent will receive two more of these guys, once again randomly distributed across your lanes. Throughout a match, you will look to make use of spell cards with various effects and the unique signature spell cards that belong to each hero. Equipment is the final card type in Artifact and can be found in the shop. You'll be finding yourself purchasing these items to appropriately arm your heroes for combat, much like in Dota 2. Players in Artifact will be given a limited amount of time, 5 minutes each turn to be exact, as indicated by the timer in the top right that counts down. After every round, 2 minutes is added to the timer. Turns go faster than you think, so you should appropriately budget your time and make sure you play mindfully so that you never run out on the clock. When the game begins, the starting player is determined randomly and starts off the first action phase. Each lane has its own refreshable mana pool that starts at 3 and increases by 1 each turn. As you may have guessed, mana is a currency that you expend to cast spells like Book of the Dead or Assassin's Shade. During the action phase, each player takes turns playing cards onto the current board. The game enters the combat phase once both players elect to pass the turn without performing an action. Each lane has its own action phase. Once complete, you'll move to the next from left to right. Now let's talk about combat. During combat, heroes and creeps will attack in the direction that was determined in the action phase. If there is an opposing creep or hero in front of your cards, your creep or hero will hit whatever is in front of it. If there are no cards in front of it, cards have a 25% chance of attacking diagonally left, a 25% chance of attacking diagonally right, and a 50% chance of attacking straight towards the tower. This means that more than half the time, an unopposed creep or hero will deal direct damage to your opponent. The main factors which determine if a card defeats its opposition are their relative attack, health pool, and any other augmentations such as armor. With the conclusion of combat in one lane, the action then switches to the next, and so forth, 
before starting up the shopping phase. During the shopping phase, each player can spend gold that they have earned during the course of the game. Killing creeps provides 1 gold, and defeating heroes provides a whopping 5 gold. Certain cards can also affect gold generation, such as Payday, a 3 mana spell that doubles your gold. In the shop interface, you will be shown on the left a random secret shop item, in the middle a card selected by the game from your item deck, and on the right a consumable item like a potion. You can buy one, two, or even three items as long as you have gold to spare. If nothing catches your eye, feel free to save up for a bigger purchase after future rounds. Once both players elect to finish shopping or pass, the phase ends and the game proceeds to the next action phase. When entering the next action phase, the player who gets priority to act first is the one who passed first during the last round. It's here where you will look to play heroes that are ready to be redeployed and you can see in which lane your new creeps will randomly spawn. This is where the direction of where your minions and heroes will attack is determined. Once finished, both players draw two cards and the phases keep repeating until one player emerges victorious. And just like that, you should have an under understanding of the basic game mechanics that make up Artifact. Artifact releases on Steam on November 28, 2018. In future videos, we'll be taking a more in-depth look at various aspects of the game as we approach the beta launch in October. After learning about the basics of Artifact, what are your first impressions? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to keep up with all our future releases. For Action Esports, this is Real Terror signing out.